All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I've got my camera set up right there, and uh, Chicken Hole Base is way over there. Three quarters of a mile away. I'm gonna jump in my truck. We're gonna head over there, pick up my rifle, and then shoot back at this camera. I really want to see how that looks and sounds. <laughs> Hopefully this camera will stay synced up with it so we can have the timing and all correct. And uh, if I manage to hit it, it'll be an amazing shot and I won't be too upset. <laughs> all right, so I'll just uh, fast forward the video a little bit until we're over there. target 1.2 kilometers away even if I miss that hill there's nobody down in the field behind it so we should be good hello King Buck how you doing good all right so there's my guns let's put this camera on a tripod put some earplugs in Send a few rounds down that way. All right. We're going to start with the Mosin. Send about four rounds. Okay, didn't see where it hit, but I'm also not using a scope, so it's hard to see. <laughs> Yeah, I actually saw that one hit. I'm hitting the hill just below the base of the hill that I'm aiming at, so I need to aim higher. I'm gonna send two more. Right where I wanted it.
Let's try the 22. The 22 has much lower muzzle velocity, lower uh, energy in general. The bullet might will definitely not be supersonic once it gets there. You might have to aim pretty high. I'll just send a few rounds, kind of step them up. It's probably the best way to do it. That's it. Let's go retrieve the other camera and see how I did. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave this one recording so we can see how well it's synced up. Okay, King, stay out of the reels. I guess I don't need this here anymore. Dusty today. It's still so early in the year. At least the plants are still pretty wet. So, didn't start any fires. It wasn't likely that I would. Let's see. I think one of the bullets landed around here. I'm trying to see the impact mark. Well, we'll get the other camera. Look at it with that. Didn't hit it. Guess that's good. Let's uh, double clap again. Perfect. Let's shut them off. Still going? Good. All right, so future Cody here. I think the first thing you guys are going to want to see is the sound of the bullets landing. All right, all right. Without the sound of the other camera Oh, superimposed onto it. So here it is. And of course, the sound from the smaller rifle. So I didn't hear the sound of the bullet from the smaller rifle landing, and I'm pretty sure the bullet just wasn't making it that far. Uh, we'll come back to that later. But for now, let's talk about the sound of the larger rifle's bullet landing. It made a really loud cracking noise, which sounds suspiciously like a sonic boom, like a whip crack. Now, I'm not entirely sure on that, is it the sound of the bullet cracking through the air, because it is supersonic even at that distance, or is it just the sound of it hitting the dirt? So to separate those two, I decided to set the camera up closer and then shoot past it. I absolutely love this. You can actually hear three distinct noises. You can hear the crack of the bullet going by. You can hear the sound of the rifle firing and then you hear the sound of the bullet ricocheting off the ground behind the camera. That's, that's so great. So one of my Patreon supporters asked if I could see the muzzle flash of the rifle going off with the distant camera. To achieve that, I waited till dusk and I zoomed the camera in as much as I could. 
Uh, the video is going to be very grainy because I had to boost the ISO up as much as possible to uh, be able to detect the faint flash from that distance, but here it is. I'll uh, show that again, but uh, with the video cropped down. And yes, you can actually see the muzzle flash, and then sometime later hear the bullet land and then the sound of the gun. So while I was working on this video, uh, just for kicks, I took the audio from the video that I recorded with the rifles during the day, and the audio from the video that I recorded at dusk, and I noticed that the time it took the sound to get to the camera was 107 frames on the first video, and 109 frames on the video taken at dusk. Now, uh, the first one, I had the two cameras going. Uh, they were synced up, plus or minus about half a frame, and you know there could be some other uh, errors that build up. So let's say it's plus or minus a frame, but that's still, that's two frames different. I was recording at 30 frames per second, so that's a 15th of a second, or the equivalent of having the camera 60 to 80 feet closer. I think what that is, is the fact that it was a little bit cooler at dusk than it was at midday. And sound travels slower through a cold gas than it does through a hot gas. <laughs> uh, the difference is not that much, the temperature difference wasn't that great, but I think it's cool that I was actually able to notice that. And I think I want to try this experiment again with a bigger temperature differential. A uh, quick note, uh, you'll also notice that the sound of the bullet arrives at different times, and that's true for most of the shots, and that's just because the bullet is landing at a different distance from the camera. Uh, if it lands far away, it takes longer to get to it than if it lands closer, and so all of them are going to be varying a little bit on that. So back to the smaller gun. I still wanted to know what it sounds like when those bullets hit the ground, so I set the camera up much closer, and then I fired a couple of rounds at the ground in front of the camera. And also one more with the round going past the camera. So I noticed a couple of things here. First, the bullet wasn't making that loud cracking noise. It didn't have that whip crack. So it definitely wasn't going supersonic even at this closer range. And that is confirmed by the fact that I'm pretty sure the sound of the gun was making it there before the sound of the bullet. So to confirm this and to figure out how far it is before the bullet travels subsonically, I decided to set up again, this time firing close to the camera, doing 50 paces back, firing again, and repeating that all the way out to ended up being about, about a thousand feet. So here's the video clip of those shots. And when I stacked all the audio on top of each other in the video editor, lining up the sound of the gun firing, I noticed there was only one single shot in which the bullet arrived before the sound of the gun. And that was at 50 paces or about 100 feet away. That means that the bullet travels from supersonic to subsonic around about between 100 and 150 feet which is a lot closer than I thought it would be. I guess it does make sense since the 22 only shoots the bullet at about 1200 feet per second and the speed of sound is 1150 something. So it's just barely above the speed of sound coming out of the muzzle so it makes sense that it would drop below the speed of sound fairly quickly. 
But yeah, if I put a line through all the points where the sound of the bullet arrived, you can see a nice neat curve showing the sounds separating from the sound of the gun as the bullet slows down throughout its flight. And it's, of course, because of this slowdown that the bullet drops significantly. Uh, the later shots I was having to aim pretty high above the camera. Uh, this uh, video clip here the bullet actually landed in front of the camera even though I was aiming at a spot probably at least a hundred feet above the camera. In fact on that shot I think the bullet bounced off the ground and came very close to the camera. I think that was the closest the camera came to being hit through this entire experiment set. This means that when I was doing the shots uh, initially with the camera sitting three quarters of a mile away the bullets were not getting there like at all. They weren't even getting halfway. Uh, in order to get the bullet to go that far, I think it would go that far, but I would have to aim not here, but here. You know, way up into the blue sky for the bullet to land near the camera. And at that point it's just ridiculous. Like The odds of it landing actually near the camera is fairly low at that point because I don't have a reference to aim at. <laughs> Alright, so there it is. Just a fun little experiment that I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, maybe next time, if there's interest, I'll do some more uh, shots of the 22, maybe at a closer range, get more uh, resolution on the supersonic to subsonic transition. Maybe I'll try out a handgun. Or maybe I'll never visit this project again. But, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.